I'd ever use Facebook. I use Facebook and MSN has recently set up something similar where you can link to other ones and I also use one called My Yearbook. Uh, Facebook. And Twitter. Oh, I used to use Facebook, but not, not these days. Well, Facebook's privacy settings, to be honest, just follow them. I use an alias, I don't use my real name. Um, one from a film which is quite common, so if anybody's looking for me specifically, they'd have to find everybody else with that name first. Um, I've got a complicated password and I'm set to secure, so people can't get to my information. Passwords for different websites. So do I, and I don't click the remember me button, so... At home we use quite a lot of encryption, but um, never leave it logged on and I'm very careful what kind of information I put onto the site. That I'm aware of now. Not that I know of. My measures have been quite, you know, successful. Not that I know of. <laughs> no. Uh, no, but I've got online banking. I shouldn't really be telling you that. <laughs> I've got a uh, Facebook. Go on BBC Sport, you know, usual. Quite a bit of time, to be fair. Lots, lots. I spend at least an hour a day on Facebook, and more on days when I haven't got any lectures or things to do, so quite a lot. Quite a bit, buy most of my clothes online. Uh, DVDs, social networking sites. Yeah, most of my life as well, yeah. Probably more than I'd like thinking about it, because when we first got the internet I was convinced I'd never kind of use it, but um, now there's very rarely a day goes by when I don't use, use it for a couple of hours. I've got Norton, I trust Norton. What are you doing for that? None. Um, I don't know of the names, I got quite a lot once about a thousand viruses, that was quite fun. I never really had a virus, so I don't really know any of them. Thing. Um, then, for a Trojan horse, I think it's not that hard. Not very well upon it. The internet these days is a place to keep in contact with friends. However, not everyone on the internet is who they say they are. When talking to online friends, keep in mind that they may not be who they say they are. Although they may be sending you a photo of someone of a similar age to you, they could have gotten that from somewhere else and be a lot older than they say they are. Always ask the same question that they are asking you. If they ask you for a photo, never give any provocative photos of yourself or someone else. If they keep persisting, inform an adult and report them. The disadvantage of internet dating, people do not always give the truth about their location, so they may be further or closer than you think. If you decide to meet someone on the internet, keep in mind the following. Always meet in a public place and let people know where you are going and what time you will be back. Never change your plan without letting an adult note first. Never give them your personal details, including your last name, address and bank details. In spite of dangers, there are some pros. If you are moving into shared accommodation, you can talk to your flatmates before. You can keep in contact with your friends if you move away and arrange visits to see them. You can meet a future partner on a trusted internet dating website. If you move to a new city, you can meet people who have similar interests to you and could show you around. The internet can be dangerous, but if you pay attention, it doesn't have to be. And you can use it for your advantage. Just remember, although it's easier to talk to people from the comfort of your own home, Make sure you go out and socialise with your real friends in public. Well, I think if, if you think about health, there are some positives um, in that um, people who say, for example, have social phobia, they don't like meeting people face to face, or they have specific health problems which mean they can't go out, or they might have specific health problems uh, that very few people have. The internet actually gives them the possibility to connect with other people who've got similar um, experiences and the ability to make friends and, and kind of interact with people across the globe, not just locally. So although sort of it can have negative health, you know, not going out and, and sort of being physically active for people who aren't physically active or have other health problems, I think it can actually have quite a good positive um, benefit for them.
Um, I guess the first one which might be a negative is the kind of health things, like if you're spending all your time inside on the internet you might not be going out to hang out with people, getting a bit of exercise running around the street or that sort of thing and a uh, lack of sunshine maybe if you spend all your time inside <laughs> talking to people on that. So for people who've got, who are having all sorts of difficulties or problems, who just maybe don't have many friends offline, the internet is a real opportunity to make friends. Now the extent to which that's a real friend or not it is kind of you know debatable but I think the whole idea that people will stop having real life friends because they meet people on Facebook is a little bit of a kind of you know moral panic that the media and that like to put out there. ID theft is a big problem and a lot of it actually happens because people are not very good with their personal information offline. So people throwing bank statements away and things that they get through the post that have got all sorts of you know, address, date of birth, bank details on. Um, but of course one of the other key things now is that because banking and things like that are happening online a lot more, um, and at the same time people are putting a lot more personal information about themselves on things like Facebook, there's a real thing to think about what people might use the information that you put about yourself online for. So that can be for, for you know, all sorts of nasty things like you know, being harassed and things like that, but people can use it to guess what your date of birth is, what your mother's maiden name is, all things that people usually use for uh, passwords for online accounts, for banking and things like that. So criminals and people who, who like steal ID um, to, to commit fraud are actually using Facebook and things like that and stealing phones so they can get onto people's Facebook to look into their passwords and all that information. So there is kind of something to think about. Putting your information online is not just about being stalked or bullied or anything like that. It actually can be used to sort of steal your identity. Internet identity theft is different from common identity theft from a few ways. Common identity theft takes place after something is physically stolen from you like a wallet containing credit cards, in a driver's license, or an unshredded credit card statement from your garbage bin. The thief would take these stolen articles and use them to make a fraudulent purchase or something of that nature. However, internet identity theft can be much more devastating than conventional identity theft because most victims of internet identity theft are completely unaware that anything has been stolen from them until it is too late. There are many ways thieves can obtain a person's identity information. Skimming of credit cards during a purchase or at an ATM machine. Following you pretending to form legitimate service or claiming there is a problem with your account. All we need is a few details off you. Your account number, your sort code, and everything will be yours. Go through your refuse or public waste disposal sites looking for discarded documents, bills, receipts, and so on. There are many simple ways to help prevent yourself against identity theft. Shredding mail and other paperwork that contains personal information, including junk mail, before throwing it away. Check your bank and credit card statements. Look for any unusual activity. If you need to update your information online, use the normal process you have been used before. Or open a new browser window and type in website address of the legitimate company's account maintenance page. Don't do as follows. Carry necessary information with you, such as social security cards. Giving your social security number to anyone who calls you. Okay, my card that I'm happy with. 1978. How identity thieves use your personal information. Go on spending spree.